What's going on everyone? Joe back with Real Joe's Barbecue and today we're cooking up that smoked meatloaf. Let's get into it. So we're going to start off by dicing up this whole onion and getting it sauteed in that cast iron skillet. I'm going to remove the outside first and the top and bottom. That's just how I like to do mine. And then I do the old slicing into it, slice it sideways and dice it up. Once I got it all diced up, I put it in a bowl and set it to the side. I wanted to do that first because the next ingredient is going to dirty up the cutting board. That's right, got the bacon. We're going to slice this open and then I'm just going to be cutting this bacon into about inch thickness pieces. I'm going to get this all sliced up and we're dropping this in the cast iron to get it cooking first. And then we'll take that out and put the onions and the bacon grease to cook it all up together. Just listen to that sizzle. There's nothing like cooking bacon in your cast iron. All right, once that bacon's cooked how you like it, you're just gonna get all that bacon out of the pan. You're definitely gonna leave all that grease in there because that is what we're gonna saute our onions up in. That gives the onions just a great amount of flavor. You get all that bacon grease cooked into those onions. You're gonna saute these in this bacon grease until they start looking translucent. And then we're gonna be pulling those out and setting them to the side as well. We want the bacon and the onions to kind of cool down a little bit before we start mixing everything together. So we're just gonna set these aside and bowl. So the first ingredient I'm gonna be adding here is some brown sugar. Uh, the recipe called for a maple brown sugar. I just had light brown sugar sitting in my pantry, so that's what I used. Next, I'm gonna be putting in a fourth a cup of ketchup. Just gonna dump that right in the bowl as well. We're gonna follow that up with some Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. Uh, use whatever barbecue sauce you like. I, use, I had this in my fridge as well, so that's what I used. And we're gonna use another half a cup of that. Moving right along, we're gonna add in some mustard. We're gonna do three tablespoons of this. I didn't grab a measuring spoon, I just used the spoon I grabbed out of my drawer. It's good enough for me. After you get done with that mustard, we're gonna move on to some Worcestershire sauce. I'm using the same spoon, we're gonna do two tablespoons. This is more of like a bar pour. I'm just gonna keep pouring, kinda of cleans the spoon out. I like the taste of it, good enough. Now we're adding some Cosmos Dirty Bird. If you want this spicier, get the hot version. I didn't do spicy. I just used the regular, and I'm just kind of eyeballing that. And then we're gonna mix all that together before we get our next ingredients added. All right, once you have this beautiful mixture, you're ready to add in your beef. I used an 80-20 ground beef. Use whatever type of ground beef you like. Then once you got that put in there, I'm adding some hot sausage. This wasn't too spicy with just that hot sausage, so use whatever one you want though. If you want it more sweet, you can use some maple sausage. So you're just gonna start mixing this up and mixing it until you got a pretty good consistency. Then we're gonna add in some breadcrumbs. We're gonna be adding in two cups of breadcrumbs here. And finally, we're just gonna be adding three whole eggs in. Once you get those eggs in, you're gonna start mixing it up again. You wanna make sure you really get in there and mix it. You'll notice when I put my mixture into the tins that I didn't get all of the uh, breadcrumbs off the bottom. They turned out fantastic but uh, just make sure you get some good mixing in there. I definitely need a bigger bowl. This is pretty much all I could put in this one bowl. It was getting a little too full for me. So what, an easy way to do this is to use some plastic wrap and put these in the containers first, but I was out of plastic wrap, so I had to use some parchment paper. It worked, but the uh, plastic wrap would definitely be easier to uh, put in there and not have to fight like I did with the, uh, the parchment paper. The reason we're putting it in here like this is because we're actually going to be putting these in the freezer overnight and then we'll pull them out tomorrow and put them straight on the smoker. And having them frozen before really helps to keep them together. So for the first one, I just did a whole regular meatloaf. The second one, I tried to fill it full of cheese. You'll see that it didn't work out like I was hoping it would, but it was the thought that counts. I think you could do this again and really put a lot more cheese in there and it would it'd turn out pretty good. So there's my cheese one, I'm gonna put that to the side there. And for the final one, I wanted to do the old bacon weave. So you know I had to knock the weave out, get that all on there, and then I flipped it over with the parchment paper. What would have been the smarter thing to do is just put the parchment paper down first and build the weave on that because this was actually the second time I put the weave together. The first time when I went to flip it, it just fell apart. So definitely if you're gonna do a bacon weave, 
put the parchment paper down first, do the weave on top of it. But as you'll see when I get done, the bacon weave one was probably my least favorite of all these because you don't get the crust that you get built up with a smoker on the meatloaf because the bacon covers it. But you know, everything's good to experiment with. So there we go. We're gonna stuff this last one full of the meatloaf. Then we're just gonna be weaving that bacon on top of it. Like I said, these are all going in the freezer overnight. You want a hard block of meat to be thrown on the smoker. It just makes them hold together really well and they actually don't take that long to cook. I was really surprised how fast they did cook. So those went in the freezer. Next day, pulling them out. This is what they look like. Super easy. They pulled right out of these tins. The parchment paper worked awesome but it would be a lot easier just to use some plastic wrap. So I had the smoker up and running at 250 degrees. I just pulled all three of these out, got them situated, and then we went out and threw them on the smoker. Check it out. Look at those. Cheese stuffed, bacon wrapped, regular, three smoked meatloaves. Let's get these cut open and try them. All right guys, you already know which one I'm most excited to cut into. It's gonna be the cheese filled, but we'll slice into this guy first. Perfect meatloaf, look at that. And take this little piece off the side here. That's for me. Mm. The bacon wrapped. You can never go wrong with more bacon. We're gonna move these guys to the side so we can get the clear picture. Let's see how this cheese wrap turned out. Or cheese stuff turned out. Ah! Where'd all the cheese go? So I noticed in my smoker, there was quite a bit of cheese that had come out the bottom. So one of these, right there, there's our culprit, culprit. There's our, oh, she's cheesing out now. But that hole right there, the cheese started coming out. I should've made a thicker base before I put this in. You can see where the cheese was. Should've built up the base a little more. Cheese did a little bit more in there, but man, let's give these a try. I'm super excited to try these out. This is just the regular first one. Whew, it's hot right off the smoker, but that has so much flavor. That is amazing. All those ingredients cooked together in there. You can tell these things held up perfectly. Like I can just take this, this whole log here. That's a meat log right there. It held up perfectly. The flavors are awesome. Really barbecue-y. Not any... There's no spice to it, I didn't use the spicy part. Mm. And even though I use spicy sausage, there's not really any spice to it. Let's try this one. So we got the uh, extra bacon one. Oh yeah. The thing with this one is, since I have that bacon on there, the outside of the meatloaf didn't get this almost bark like this one did, or the cheese one did. So I like the idea of a bacon weed, but I think the bark and the crunch you get on the outside of the meatloaf is better without it. Now let's see if we can get some cheese out of this one. There's still a little cheese in there. You can see the steam coming off of it. Hmm. Just as good a flavor as the first one. I mean, they're all the same recipe. This just had cheese in the middle of it. If it would have been a lot more cheese and I was oozing out, I probably would have been a lot cooler for the pictures, but they all taste amazing. Any one of these would be fantastic. I'm gonna be eating these for the next week or so for work. These will make some great meatloaf sandwiches. Look at that. Thing's perfect. Perfect for slices. Thanks for watching everyone. These meatloafs turned out amazing. You guys gotta give it a try. I'll put the recipe down in the description so you can see exactly what I used. I followed a recipe off of Cosmos. Uh, I just used a little bit different ingredients and then changed up a couple of them. I highly suggest you guys give these a try. And thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm getting close to that 4,000 watch hours. So if you wanna share me out, that'd be awesome. And uh, we'll see you next time.